This is the world's first country to have more EVs than gasoline and petrol powered cars. What are the numbers and how long does this normally take? I think that's what a lot of people wonder. They're saying, you know what, there's so many internal combustion engine cars on the road. It's going to take many decades before we can get rid of them and replace them with EVs. It actually happens a fair bit faster than you would think. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you. Speaking of EVs that you can buy in Norway. Now, Norway is, of course, this country where EVs have now overtaken gas-powered cars in terms of vehicles actually on the roads. Now, of course, this doesn't include diesel-powered cars, I should mention. In Norway, you can buy the car that I'm about to pick up tomorrow, guys. So I'm pretty excited. The new x G6 is actually it's being delivered here tomorrow. And we're going to do a big road trip. I'll be filming, filming some of those videos live on the channel, guys, of us, um, my boys and I, we're driving from here to Melbourne. Uh, Shani can't come, unfortunately. She's um, just recovering from radiation. So she's done radiation uh, treatment. And hopefully, I won't get into too many details. I don't think she wants me to talk about the details. Hopefully, we'll be surgery in a couple of months. But we, we don't know for sure yet what's going to be happening. But yeah, she can't sit down in a car for that long. In fact, can't sit down in a car for more than you know half an hour. So she can't come, unfortunately. But anyhow... X G6, if you're in Australia, uh, you can put in a pre-order, a deposit. And if you want to get one, they're, I think, the best value vehicle you can get for a, a family. And you can use my link. And if you use my link, you will get a free charger and installation. Now, I should point out, I don't make any money from that. And that's very, very much always going to be the case. I don't plan on selling cars. Anyhow, the world leader in EV adoption... Norway, said that of the 2.8 million passenger cars registered in the country, around 26.3% are fully electric. That's more than the number of gas vehicles on the road. Diesel is the most common vehicle type, making up about 35% of the vehicles on Norwegian roads right now. But it won't be very long before EVs take over diesel as well, because if you look at the sales right now, Norway is up to about 94%. Diesel cars are pretty much dead. New diesel cars in Europe have collapsed. New diesel sales for diesel vehicles after the diesel gate scandal and after people started to realize just how incredibly bad for your diesel cars are, the emissions are causing cancer, of course. Uh, diesel car sales collapsed. So I reckon give it about 12 months and the EV fleet will have surpassed diesel in Norway as well. Maybe in a couple of years, we'll hit 50% for EV registrations as a total number of cars on the road in Norway. And then I'd say by about 2030, it'll get to that point, point of maybe 60, 70%. Norway, remember, is a pretty advanced country, so they do replace their cars relatively quickly. The electrification of the passenger car fleet is keeping a high pace, said Norway. And Norway is moving rapidly towards becoming the first country in the world with a passenger car fleet dominated by electric cars, said the director of OFV. He predicted EVs will outnumber diesel cars by 2026. I think it's probably very likely to even happen next year. Norway leads the world in EV adoption, thanks to government incentives that include exempting electric cars and trucks from sales and emissions taxes. It's not really that big of an incentive, to be honest. There's bigger incentives in America lowering tolls and parking fees for these vehicles and allowing EV drivers to use bus lanes. Now, allowing EV drivers to use bus lanes is completely irrelevant because now that what 25% of all cars in Norway uh, are EVs, it's not an advantage anymore. So that's not really relevant to people buying an EV today. In fact, it makes no difference at all. Now, of course, uh, lowering, uh, exempting EVs from sales and emissions taxes, that's, that's a definite positive. That's not the key driver, though, at this point in time. Keep in mind that at this point in time, 94% of all sales in Norway are electric. And if that was the key driver, then the same would be the case in America and other places where they offered big, big subsidies. Uh, you'd find that EVs would be 94% or at least over 50%. They're nowhere near that, right? Another big, I think a bigger reason for that is people in Norway are clearly willing to change to something new. So... 
it's this kind of um, understanding of technology and not being afraid of technology and having this willingness to change that I think, um, along with you know being a really wealthy country, has led to this this very fast adoption. The Norwegian government has said that it hopes its tax incentives, which are funded partly by the money it makes selling oil and gas to other countries, will allow Norway to end all new gas and diesel vehicle sales in 2025, next year. So I don't think, and Norway's not saying they're going to ban them, it's saying that the market will just choose not to buy them anymore. And it makes sense, right? Imagine if you were one of the 6% of people who didn't buy an EV last month in Norway. You'd have to be thinking to yourself, what's going to happen to my wholesale? What's going to happen to my the value of my car, my internal combustion car in a few years? Because the, the resale value of internal combustion cars in Norway has collapsed. It's strange that the global media are not mentioning this, not pointing this out. It's a big risk for you, right? If you go and buy a plug-in hybrid, a hybrid or an internal combustion car today, you are making a pretty, it is a really risky decision if this car has got a high value. If it's a, if it's going to cost you more than $50,000, you could lose a huge amount of money on resale, a massive amount. It's kind of like that situation, right, where people were buying, they were buying those old uh, Blackberries and Nokia 3310s and all those old Ericsson phones. And all of a sudden the smartphone came out. What do you think all those old phones were worth, right? Nothing. Norway's tax incentive for low emissions vehicles introduced in 2007 spurred a decade-long spike in sales for diesel vehicles, which were calculated to have lower carbon dioxide emissions than gas-powered cars. Now, of course, we now know that was a lie. Diesel sales peaked in 2017, then sharply fell in favor of the growing EV market. And you can actually buy a lot of different electric car models in, in Norway, many of which you probably never heard of unless you watch all of my videos. I've covered most of them, but there are a few I haven't even actually even spoken about on this channel. There are still almost 1 million diesel cars on the road, according to OFV. Many of these will be rolling on Norwegian roads for years to come. Globally, about 18% of all new cars sold last year were EVs. This year, that number is higher. It's just over 20%. 60% of new vehicle sales in China are plug-in hybrids or EVs. About a quarter of vehicle sales in Europe are electric and just under 10% of sales in the US. It's actually at about 8.5% based on July. Now, obviously, EV sales worldwide are growing quickly, but they're not rising as fast in the US as some car makers expected. That could be partly because those vehicles are not as good as they should be. I mean, for example, the Cybertruck is easily outs outselling the Ford F-150. In fact, it's more than doubling sales of the Ford F-150 Lightning. Could be partly because the, the Ford F-150 Lightning has very, very slow charging. I mean, this is very important, I think, to truck owners who probably want to drive longer distance than the average car owner. Charging speed is 150 kilowatt, whereas charging in the Cybertruck is potentially 400 and can charge at 400 kilowatt speeds in Europe. It's been proven. So one of the reasons why I think EV sales have lagged in adoption in the US is, well, they've been targeted by the media with these fear campaigns and just brainwashed people in America into believing utter nonsense, which it seems easy to do for some reason. Uh, for some reason, the media just can brainwash um, the public very, very easily in places like Australia and the United States, and that's probably harmed adoption. But it is also the technology. The technology in China for their EVs is significantly more advanced than the majority of EV manufacturers in America, and that would be holding things back. I mean, if you want to buy a, a family van in, the, in China, you can buy one on par, pretty much on par with the cost for an internal combustion van. And not to mention, you can buy these new family vans that have, you know, 800 kilometers of range, right? That, that applies to many different sectors of the automotive industry. So these Chinese manufacturers are covering off all these different sectors. They have electric utes that are relatively affordable. They have all these, you know, $5,000 EVs and then very, very luxurious EVs. Every market sector, there's an EV. You can't say that about the American car market. And that's one of the reasons I think adoption there has been slow. But hopefully that will change drastically over the next few years. Now, of course, protectionism in the United States is going to slow down EV adoption. It doesn't allow for competition. It doesn't allow for uh, better products to come into the market. And unfortunately, that's one of the differences between the US and Norway. Norway doesn't have an automotive industry to protect so it will take whatever cars people want to send there. And it seems to me that that is also one of the reasons why EV sales have grown so quickly. And it's also one of the reasons why I think 
EV sales will grow very, very fast in Australia. A lot of Australians are anti-EV. However, once you start to see how good they are, once you start to see how, how good some of these EVs that are coming from China are, you might change your mind pretty quickly. Thanks for watching.